Good morning. This is Mubaraka. I am in a really dark space, aren't I? I don't know if you can really see me. Uh, we'll see. All right. So I am outside today because here in Connecticut it is absolutely gorgeous, gorgeous outside. Um, I'm going to try to get in the sun a little bit. Um, and as I promised, Mondays, I think I got a little bit confused between 10 a.m. and 11 a.m., um, but I had advertised for 11 a.m., so here I am at 11 a.m. So this morning, we have a lot to talk about, something that was probably not on the agenda last week, um, and I come on this morning really, really disturbed. So uh, everybody in America knows, and I'm sure in plenty of places around the world, if you are watching me on Facebook Live, then you obviously have access to the internet. And you know that here in the United States, we just experienced a horrible tragedy of um, 50 people being shot and killed inside of a, a, a club in, Orlando, Florida, and it's very disturbing on several levels. Um, it's just disturbing that anyone, I mean, I just can't even fathom the mentality that it would take for somebody to feel that they can indiscriminately take human lives. Um, so on a human level, it's very disturbing. From a perspective of a Muslim, it's even more disturbing because Islam, even though we, it's, a, it's, I think probably said over and over again, and it's, it's probably not taken as, taken as, um, um, as literal as it's meant that Islam is a religion of peace, but uh, Islam in no way justifies this type of behavior. That this type of behavior is, you know, Islam is a religion where you can't even cut a tree down during war without a justification. And to feel like you can indiscriminately take lives is nowhere in any part of this religion. And so it, it's, it's very disturbing from that aspect as well. In addition, it's as a Muslim in America, of course, once again, it creates, puts us in this awkward dilemma of having to re-explain that this was a mentally disturbed individual and his mental state has nothing to do with Islam. You know, being Muslim does not make you immune to mental health issues. And in my, for my view, for you to be able to do something like that and indiscriminately take another human's life um, for no reason, you have to have a mental health issue. <laughs> so always to me that this means that this person has some issues. Um, I don't want to focus the whole uh, time that I have today on Facebook Live on that, but I certainly felt like it needed to be said. It needed to be said that, um, you know, we don't, we in no way as Muslims justify or condone or, you know, I'm sure many people have said it, but I just felt like I needed to say that. But what that does for us as Muslim, particularly as Muslim women, and that is my focus and concern is um, where we are health-wise as Muslim women, and a part of that is mental health. A part of, um, of us functioning on a daily basis, particularly now in the West where the spotlight is on us, particularly if you are a hijabi, you know, um, as, peop as Muslim women that wear hijab, we are on the front lines of Islam in America, and we are in a position of having the exact having the direct um the direct focus and whether it be good or bad directly on us because we are the most visible muslims um, and that can cause a lot of stress so what i want to talk about today is um how are we with our mental ment where we are with our mental health as it pertains to um, what's going on around us. And alhamdulillah, we say things like, 
uh, you know, we only fear Allah and, you know, we trust in Allah and Allah will keep us safe and may Allah protect us. And all of that is certainly good. But we have to be aware that even just being in an environment where you are aware of Islamophobia, you are aware of the sh that you're going to have a certain level of stress, right? So our bodies, we feel when we are in a hostile environment. We feel um, and our bodies react physiologically to that hostility. So as an African American living in America, I am very well aware that there are particular um, physiological effects of living in a society that can be perceived as hostile, even if it is not blatantly and overt. Um, it can be microaggressions, it can be a look, it can be, um, you know, being mistreated and you, in your mind, you are, this is because I'm black or this is because I'm Muslim. Just having that feeling creates a physiological effect of stress. And stress can affect us not just in a way of making you feel as if you are um, targeted or if you are um, not just, <laughs> and they're banging while I'm talking to you. <laughs> Um, so not just in a way that make you feel that you're targeted, but it also make it also creates a physiological response, the stress response. So very quickly, because I'm sure you probably heard this a hundred times, um, human beings have fight, fight or flight, right? And so when we are under stress, even if it is not a tiger chasing us right <laughs> even if it's not a tiger chasing us we have this physiological response of increased heart rate um our we actually decrease blood flow to to uh, certain organs and increase to others in order for us to be able to run and to jump and we it shunts our blood um, away from our the the our skin so it protects us from um, for example if you were being chased by a tiger and you had to go through thorns right if you were gonna bleed profusely every time something cut you then it would be a problem right so it shunts our blood away from the surface of our skin and as we, it, it goes through these physiological responses, it is a natural reaction, but it is not meant to be a constant reaction. Our body is not designed to be in a constant state of uh, uh, fight or flight, right? So after a while, you actually just poop out and that is when it really hits you. So if you've ever had something going on in your life and it's been really stressful and you've been dealing and you've been dealing and then just one day it just like you get like the worst flu ever and you're just can't even cope anymore. That's your body just coming to a point where it can't function anymore in that fight or flight stage. So how do we get ourselves to a point of, um, or prevent us getting to that point? So the first thing that I would suggest, particularly now, is one, recognize it, right? Don't try to um, um, verbally, don't try to verbally and trick yourself by saying, oh no, I'm not afraid, oh no, it doesn't affect me. It affects us. Even watching TV, even on the internet, watching it, when you're watching it, it's affecting you, all right? So if you know about it, then you've been affected by it. So the first thing is to recognize, recognize that, that it affects us. The second thing that we need to do once we recognize that is try to pay attention to our personal stress response. So everybody responds differently to stress, right? So some people say, when I am stressed, I feel it in my shoulders, or I may get lower back pain, or um, I, I know for me personally, one of the things that I feel when I get stressed is I, I feel it in my neck, my neck tenses up, right? So I know that 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 is a stress response for me. Um, another thing that happens to some people when they feel stressed is they may get a headache. They may so all of the responses may be very different for individuals, but you need to recognize what your stress response is. The second thing, which is probably the simplest thing that you can do, is literally breathe. 
So when we focus on our breath, you are in the present. You are here. You are recognizing that um, you are that you are present in your body, and whatever else is going on. I promise you, it will not get, unless somebody is literally dying in front of you, it will not get better or worse the time it takes for you to take five breaths. So start from that. When we take time to actually breathe, it actually decreases that fight or flight mechanism and it increases our parasympathetic um, nervous system, which is the system that calms us down, right? So that's really important. So when we talk about taking breath, it's literally focusing only on how you are breathing at that moment, right? So literally inhaling and exhaling not I'm actually not gonna do it with you right now because I'm talking to you and when you do it you should actually not even be focusing on me talking or somebody explaining it to you we really have to focus on taking time to be in the present and be where we are um, that's really important the other thing that I would would say when you do a mental health check-in don't just do it with yourself but also do it with your children I'm so so conscious of um, how this is affecting our young people um, not just and so the young people who are just they don't know exactly what's going on and they don't understand why Islam is being villainized they don't understand why people who are claiming to be Muslim are doing these things so this can be of various ages you know one of the I think one of the best things that I've done for my family is about two years ago we got rid of cable we just we just paid the bill let it get cut off <laughs> and then we could got we, we uh we got it cut off um, and it decreased even my kids recognize that wow since we stopped watching CNN it really decreased so I do get my I'm online anyway and I get most of my news online and I can go and I can look at the things that I think are significant that I see trending that is important to, to pay attention to but we don't watch the news um, and that is a huge huge de-stressor and if you are but before we made that transition into getting rid of the cable altogether one of the things that we would do is we would intentionally try to watch it when our kids were not in the room and we had teenagers at the time, right? So I'm not just talking about you have a four or five year old, of course we wanna protect those kids, but we also want to really think about the teenagers and because they are at a very um, delicate age where they can be swayed one way or another and it can either lead, you can either lead them to love Islam or lead them to hate Islam because they are thinking that this is what Islam is about. So it's not really, um, it, it's it's not only preventive for now for stress, but it also will protect their 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 understanding of Islam. So it's really important that we we try to protect them in a way of helping them understand what true Islam is about and that this is not Islam. And if they do see it, talk to them about it. That is super, super important. In the face of knowing nothing, people will believe anything. And that includes our children. That includes other Muslims. That includes new shahadas or people who are who are considering Islam. Or people who have been Muslim for a long time and they're just not around Muslims a lot. Or they have a limited understanding of the deen. Talk about it. Don't assume that the people that your kids know. You know, I was born and raised Muslim. Alhamdulillah, my kids were born and raised Muslim. But I never assumed that they know things about this deed so we make sure that we talk to them and tell them this is not Islam that what these people are doing is they're using it as an excuse for their demented purposes that you have to make sure that you tell it and show them in the Quran and in the hadith that you can't kill a dog without a reason 
more or less a human being and it doesn't matter what kind of lifestyle they live it doesn't matter what kind of sin that you think that they're committing you are not the judge Allah is the judge and you cannot indiscriminately go around killing people and this is what the hadith says and this is what the Quran says and explain it to them because you we cannot assume that they know things especially when they're being constantly fed the mistruth of the media so have that conversation with your children and be really clear with them also too what we want to do is we want to make sure that as we have mental health checks for ourselves that we are checking in with one another so check in with your Muslim sisters check in with your Muslim brothers make sure that as a community that you are giving this information and knowledge and you're sharing it and you have a space to talk so let's not ignore what's going on have a space to talk sometimes we are very reactionary and we say okay you know everybody let's go to the march and let's you know make sure that people know that we're in solidarity with 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 everybody and you know we're for peace and then we don't take time to be with ourselves ourselves meaning our family with our community and have a conversation about this have a conversation about how people are feeling not just kind of like this um, and let's go beyond this you know uh, uh, superficial pumping each other up yeah we know that's not Islam and you know let's not just pump each other up but really have a conversation and ask your sister like how do you feel about this are you having problems are you do you feel comfortable going out it changes it certainly certainly changes the conversation it changes the way people feel when they actually are able to express themselves so you know me I always like to tell you about the research about this so it really really interesting research that that happened um, that was done between uh, uh, it was one group who were told to keep a diary so this is another technique that you can do as a stress reduction um, because when we're stressed also our immune system reduces because you know here on fit Muslim Mile, we are all about keeping you healthy and stress is not just about oh my god I don't want you to worry or have a panic attack but stress is it's going to affect your physical health what's going on in your brain is going to determine how strong your immune system is whether or not you're getting sick a lot it's going Going to determine your sleep quality having bad sleep leads to other health issues so all of this is interconnected right so physical mental and spiritual wellness is all interconnected one of the things that so back to the study so they had one group of people to write a write a um, uh, a daily diary and they just were they just put down the activities that they did during the day the other group they wrote down a diary and and they actually wrote the way that they were feeling in their diary they were specifically told to write that they the way that they were feeling at the end of the study the people who wrote down their feelings actually got sick less and their T cells went up right your T cells is your immune cells, your immune cells that 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 fight off infection they actually went up the people who just wrote down you know I kind of woke up I went to work I did right it did not affect it didn't affect them physiologically so it's really important as human beings we are meant to express ourselves and to whether it be to another person whether it be writing it down in a diary you know it's really important that you bring those feelings out and you talk about them so that's super 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 important and of course do not feel guilty or somehow um, as some some embarrassment if you have to actually seek the help of a mental health professional it's that that's absolutely okay it is very helpful if you feel like you need to see somebody to have a couple of therapy sessions if it is uh, you know if you find that you can't focus at work or you feel starting to feel paranoid or you know you may need to talk to somebody and that's absolutely okay you should find I've actually seen a couple of posts on um, uh, on Facebook of of 
mental health professionals who are offering free services um, pro bono to people who don't have the ability to pay for them in, um, during this time. Um, I saw one post where they were offering it for anybody in the Muslim community, anybody in the LGBT community that they could come pro bono. So look for a mental health professional in your area if you feel like you know you just need somebody to talk to. That's really, uh, to me, that that's that's a huge part of it. And on a daily basis, of course, check in with yourself, check in with your family, um, make sure that you're still um, eating healthy and doing things. And so I'll, I'll just, I'll be completely honest. I try to be honest, even though I'm just on Facebook, right? <laughs> um, is it changes the way that you function on a daily basis. You know, the day that this happened, um, I really wanted to go hiking, right? So I really wanted to go hiking. Um, and I decided not to because often, um, often after these kind of things, there's a heightened amount of Islamophobia. There's, there's a fear of, you know, people, um, people reacting to it and I did not have anybody to go with and so um, I opted not to go hiking so it changes you I know one of the things after September 11th I probably did not go running I stopped going running for a, a good two months and I and I gained so much weight because of the fear of actually leaving the house and um, and and being in contact or coming into an unfortunate situation um, and so it changes the way that you function on a daily basis and you have to be aware we have to be vigilant for sure um, but we have to also be aware that we're taking alternative steps so of course with you know me if I'm gonna talk about exercise I'm gonna tell you that even if you're not doing something like you know you don't feel comfortable going out you can certainly get a great workout at home <laughs> of course you know I was gonna say that right <laughs> you can certainly get a great workout at home um, but have a plan right have an alternate plan if you have to change your activities don't just stop have an alternate plan um, and just and just be very well aware that this is that it 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 affects us on a mental level on a spiritual level on a physical level um, and inshallah that as we continue to um, be very verbal about our disagreement of these types of actions as well as um, being very vigilant in protecting ourselves and protecting our family that we are doing proactive steps that is going to um, that's not going to be detrimental to our health and so um, that's that's pretty much what I wanted to talk about today um, it's really important to me that we um, as Muslims that we speak up and we speak out it's really important that we take care of ourselves so beyond just speaking up and speaking out I'm sure you'll come across a lot of opportunities um, with Muslim organizations and even in your local community so I feel like in my space in this space where I can help you is really to bring awareness of your individual physical health and your family's physical health and know that that stress is going to affect you very physically so it's not just a mental thing it is a very physical thing people who are under a lot of stress so here's another study which is which is really interesting when 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 uh, researchers do uh, st studies about stress uh, one of the go-to populations are people who take are caretakers of people who take care of people with um, some type of disability very stressful situation even if you're dealing well it's stressful and so they find that people who are under a lot of stress when they do um, when they do tests on their immune system when they do there is one where they took um, one group of women who took care of parents with dementia and they found another group of women who was the same economic level the same um, age range and they were not caretakers right and the group and they gave them each one of them a little prick on their arm right and watched it heal so without any treatment they watched it heal 
and they took pictures along the way. The group who was under the stress, the caretakers, they actually took nine days longer to heal on average than a group that was not under stress. So it physically affects the immune system. You heal slower when you're under stress. So this is not just for caretakers, this is stress in general. When you're under stress, you heal slower. You get sick more often. You, um, you're, you have problems with memory. You have problems with sleep. All of these are very physical reactions of our body. So it's important that you recognize that and you try to take a step back and again, breathe turn off the television right so you it's funny because when I tell people that I don't have cable and they're like well how do you find out about stuff and I say if it's really important it's gonna be trending on Facebook or Twitter <laughs> and I know that is like so social media age but it's true like <laughs> if it's not really that important you're not gonna have so many people talking about it man you know, it's probably not going to affect me as much. I read my local paper, which is going to affect me directly. I, and I and that's an online paper. Um, and anything else that happens nationally or internationally, if it's trending, then I should probably go watch some videos about it. <laughs> um, and that's really how I find my news. And it's a lot less stressful. It is a lot less stressful. Um, particularly as a Muslim when you see the uh, the biasness inside of the news when you see the villainization and never ever read the comments oh that's just like it's very stressful it's very frustrating um, but we, you know we have a lot of work ahead of us I think that this is a part of us as Muslims having to really not stay closed in our own circle we have to reach out and we have to um, we have to interact with the larger community because in face of knowing nothing about Islam people will believe anything you know there's a study that says seven out of ten Americans don't even know a Muslim so if you are watching this you can say that you know a Muslim because you can feel free if you're not Muslim and you're don't know a Muslim you can say I know Mubaraka on Facebook and you can ask me questions anytime on a comment in a private message whatever you want to know I always am open for questions um, but it, I say that because in the face of knowing nothing people will believe anything so it's really important that we interact with our larger community um, and uh, I was gonna I wanted to mention one other thing to you and I'm trying to remember so I'm gonna do a little quick recap for people who did not join me from the beginning some of the suggestions that I made in order to deal with the stress of our environment one take time to breathe like one recognize what your stress response is and once you start feeling that response the immediate reaction is stop what you're doing and take breaths five breaths paying attention to nothing but your breaths and unless somebody is dying in front of you nothing is going to significantly change in the time it takes you to take five breaths all right so five breaths that's the first thing the second thing is I certainly suggest that you have a mental health check-in with yourself your children and your community not just oh my god did you see what just happened on the news but how are you feeling are you okay and listening and also expressing yourself the third thing use a diary as a way of writing down the way that you're feeling that 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 expression of emotion is a release for you um, and don't feel ashamed to actually call and have a session with a mental health professional. That's really important. If you do have to change anything about your daily activities, come up with an intentional alternate plan. So if you don't feel safe running by yourself, go to the gym or come up with a workout to do in, in, in inside your house. If you um, 
feel like you don't want your kids to do something because you are in a community that is not that has a lot of Islamophobia going around then give them an alternative give them a ride to the mall instead of you know having them catch the bus always have an alternative don't just stop your daily activity and disrupt your life so it's really important that we continue to 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 function because that's that's helpful for us mentally right so and continue to make sure that you make healthy eating choices. Even though I know it's Ramadan, we still eat in the evening time. We still eat for breakfast. Um, because that that is actually going to help you be able to, to ward off um, a lot of the effects of stress. So we know that stress decreases the immune system. And if you're loading up on sugar at night, sugar also decreases the immune system. So it puts you um, in double jeopardy. Um, so those are some of the things that that I would suggest in dealing with um, in dealing with you know the situation that that we're in. And inshallah, you know, if we continue to just live Islam as it's supposed to be lived and uh, reaching out and interacting, then we can combat you know all of the 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 negative images of Islam in this country. So that is all I have for you for the day. Um, and inshallah, I will talk to you next week. And of course, you can catch the radio show on Wednesday this week. We have a researcher coming in talking about weight loss and postmenopausal women. Hmm, that's going to be really interesting. I'm excited about that. So you can find the link here. Remember to like, share, and tell me what you think and any suggestions that you have. All right. Assalamu alaikum.